Hey there everyone, here with the second entry in my Learned NSMBU series. Uh, this one is all about ground pounds. So yeah, I really appreciate your all's feedback about the first one. Uh, I tried to learn from that, I guess. I don't know. Uh, so if you don't know, in um, NSMBU, as well as 3D World, but this is not this info does not apply to 3d world 3d world behaves a lot differently um you can, you can ground pound like jesus jump and press down if you didn't know that this level may be kind of hard <laughs> but um yeah so you can do that um there's a lot of things you can do also i've improved the hub in this level so there's seven rooms you're they're just all in one room um, so you can easily access them all and then the key door to get out at the end. This will go over a lot of different things that are kind of common as well as just some tricks that can use you can use with ground pounds. Um, but anyway, there's seven rooms in here. I'm going to walk through all of them, how they work. I'm going to try to go really in-depth to just make sure you guys understand it if... Like I said, I feel like I've been decent responding to the comments in the previous video, so um if you don't if you don't understand anything, just leave a comment and I will try to help. But yeah, so here's the first room. Uh so this one you're presented with a muncher, and we need to get this pal, and there's no way to do it. Um, you could try jumping, ground pounding, but it just, it doesn't seem to work, and this is in a two tile high ceiling, so there are two ways to do this. One is easy, and one is hard. Um, so what you want to do, you have to duck. Basically, the way ground pounds work, uh, you press down to ground pound. However, the game checks, like, hey, is this guy too close to the ground? It doesn't want to let you ground pound if you're too close. And around, probably around one and a half blocks is where it stops you. So if you just jump, it all it goes by Luigi's feet also, that one and a half blocks. So if you just jump, your feet are too close to the ground. The game checks. It's like, yeah, he's too close. Don't let him. You could even try twirling, but it doesn't work. But if you duck, his feet go a bit higher. Um, and this allows you to get enough height and the game checks and it's like, yep, you're far enough away. Uh, now this timing without a, just duck jumping in general, this is pretty tight timing. Uh, you can try it, it would probably be pretty tough, but you can jump and twirl and that gives you, like, see how much longer he stays near the ceiling? Uh, this is very lenient. Um, so you basically just duck jump, twirl, like, as you hit the ceiling. And then press down, and you can ground pound. Um, so yeah. Okay, yeah, and then after you complete a room, there's this room, which just takes you back. Uh, I'll explain why this is here later. Um, but yeah, remember, if you're too close to the ground, it won't let me ground pound, but if I'm high enough up, it works. Okay, so here's the second room. This is a very common trick in NSMBU speedruns. Uh, this time, we have a pal and a muncher. Again, uh, you'll see a lot of munchers today. Um, you need to ground pound, but this time it's a one block high ceiling. So usually this would be a coin block, but I used a brick so that when you ground pound it, it doesn't break. So what you want to do here is, if you notice when I ground pound this, the brick actually goes down. Like, see, it goes down a little bit, and that is enough to let me grab the pal. Now, if I just hold run, he doesn't grab it. Um, I think that may be because he's, like, stuck to the ground or something from the ground pound. Um, but what you want to do is ground pound while holding run and then like while you're in this butt slam on the ground animation just press jump so it just looks like this 
and he'll grab it. Um, so you can't put it back down there. But basically, um, you have to be holding run before, like, you have to be holding run before you press jump. So let's say I ground pound and I press jump, or, sorry, I press jump, then I press run. I don't know if you can see this. Probably not. Uh, yeah. That's not gonna work out. <laughs> uh, I may try to get some kind of controller cam, I don't know, but basically if you press jump, then run, it, ju it just doesn't work. But if you're already holding run, and then press jump, or if you ground pound and then hold run then jump, it'll also work. You, you just basically you have to be holding the run button before you press the jump button. So the easiest way is just hold it on the way down. And that's it. Um, it would also work with a coin block. This is what you'll probably see in a like hard speedrun level. Uh, that way you only get one chance at it. Um, but yeah. It has to be, I believe it has to be either a coin block or a ground block. A uh, note block would probably work as well. The reason it works is because it physically goes down. So like, this thing will not work. Yeah. Um, but it's not very hard. Uh, you'll... You'll see this set up a lot in, like, hard speedrun levels. It's pretty easy to recognize. Plus, you'll be like, oh, there's a muncher and I can't get by. What do I do? Anyway. Um, so yeah. That one is hard to do if you don't know what to do, because the inputs are pretty specific. But if you do, it's pretty easy. Okay, so here's the third room. Um, as we can see, there's a lot of munchers, but they will all die. Uh, this room demonstrates the fact that when you ground pound, also, yeah, if you mess up, the piggies are there to be like, hey, dude, you screwed up. Um, but when you ground pound, See how he, like, gets stuck to the ground? I can't move during that. Like, if I hold left or right, he's just stuck. Um, and the way you get around that to go fast is you jump. So if you jump, like, right when you land, you can start going to the left or right immediately. And it's way faster. It saves a lot of time. Uh, now, you can't always do that. Like, there may be something stopping you from jumping for whatever reason. But anyway, this room just, you ground pound, and if you just hold right, you get blocked by these cannons, you get piggy noises, you're like, huh, that didn't work. And you may be like, oh, maybe I was slow, I'll try again. Hold right, but nope, doesn't work. So what you do, is you ground pound and then just press the jump. It doesn't matter. It could be a regular jump, spin jump, doesn't matter. And you can get by the cannons. Uh, and you basically, you just want to do that. Unless you're not wanting to go fast, it's always advantageous to jump. And let's say this ceiling wasn't here to block me. Uh, like right here. If I jump, I instantly hit this one way. I can jump as high as I want, but if that wasn't there, uh, the fastest way is to do a tiny jump. So, like, the reason that is is because when you're in the air, you're slower if you haven't achieved max speed yet. So, if there's a ceiling above you, just jump. Doesn't matter how high. If there's not, do a tiny jump. Um, so that should be pretty easy. Uh, it's just trying to teach you that jumping is faster. Okay. We'll save this room for last, because that's going to be the most complex. Uh, this is the only room with new tech, I guess. Um, so there's a slope. It's kind of confusing looking. Also, this is the only room that can kill you, I believe. I didn't have a way to do it without killing you. Um, but you see here, so this Z does not mean let me actually put an arrow here. Let me make it more clear. 
It's kind of hard to indicate what to do. It's not as simple as the triple jump level. I don't know, maybe like that? Here we go. Anyway, uh, the Z does not mean spin on this guy. I, w I put him there to hopefully get you to ground pound, but I can't force it. Also, I don't know how I lived through that. <laughs> okay, but what you're supposed to do... This is demonstrating that if you um, if you ground pound onto a slope, you're instantly at max speed. So if I like tried this, it's not even close. Uh, and the only way by this is to spin off this thwomp. And naturally, if you mess up, oh, there's no piggies. I need to fix that. If you mess up, piggies tell you, hey, dude. You screwed up. So yeah, basically all this room is, is you ground pound and then spin when you hit the slope. And it gives you enough distance to make it. Uh, so yeah, if you just like run to the right, it's not even close. Um, but the slope ground pound it puts you at instant max speed. I've seen this in a lot of uh, speed runs. People are using it a lot. So it's not very hard. Hopefully people don't die too much. I didn't know how to make you do this without a spike. Like in a real level, there would just be a big gap. And if you, uh, if you didn't do it, you'd fall in the gap. Anyway, I don't know a better way to show it. But yeah, ground pounding onto a slope, instant max speed. Uh, okay, this room is trying to demonstrate that um, you can cancel a ground pound, and this is in speedrun levels decently often. Uh, so what we have here is just a big pile of dry buns. You ground pound them, and you hit a pow. And then this guy's in your way, and you're like, what the heck? Uh, well... What you actually want to do is, during a ground pound, you press down, ground pound, but at any time you could press up, and he'll stop. Like, you could immediately press up if you want, or do it at the last second. Uh, either way, he'll stop, and then he won't actually pound the ground. And this is trying to get you to, you know, get a feel for stopping at the last second. So if you did it the intended way, you'd hit all these guys and then press up and the cannon would not fall and then you could get through. Now I'm very aware you could cheese this. Like I said, this level's trying to teach you, so if you want to cheese, you could do this. I could put some kind of timed thing to make you go fast, but I didn't bother. Just for your own benefit. You can cheese it or just do it. So yeah, just press up and you won't ground pound. Um, okay. So this last room, uh, this is kind of related to ground pounds. I don't know, I'm struggling to find seven uses of it, but this is a very common trick you see in a lot of um, either speedruns or just new suit wall jump levels. Basically, you could do this this way. Actually, you may not even be able to. It may be too hard. Yeah, so you, I don't even think that could work. Um, and obviously, if you're skilled, you'll be like, well, I'll just blow through this, you know? Something like that. And yeah, if you can do that, you don't need this tutorial, probably. <laughs> Here we go. But, if you can't, um... So what this wants you to do is just ground pound between each one. So, a useful thing with ground pounding is it stops your horizontal speed instantly. So, like if I'm going really fast to the right, and I ground pound, he just stops. Uh, and that's extremely useful in new suit. Let's say you had like a really tight jump between two saws or something. In like Mario World, you would have to, you know, kind of line it up. 
But in New Soup, you just line it up, press down, and then he just goes directly straight down. Um, so essentially what you want to do is jump, ground pound, and twirl. So this is kind of a precursor to the last room, which is about air stalling. Um, but yeah, it's not too hard. This is pretty lenient. Uh, jump, ground pound, twirl, ground pound, twirl, ground pound, twirl, ground pound, twirl, ground pound, twirl. And um, the inputs here, whoops, the inputs here is down, up, R, or any of any of the four shoulder buttons works. I always use R, but just down, up, R, down, up, R, down, up, R, down, up, R, down, up, R. Um, if you can do this, then that's pretty good, like, even a lot of really skilled players who don't like NSMBU, they, you know, they don't do this, like, easily, I guess. It feels kind of second nature to me, because I've done it so much, but it's just so useful. Like, a lot of level creators build their level to where you're supposed to do it, like, maybe like this. And I don't even think this room's possible that way, but yeah. It's very simple. I could make this way harder. Um, but the way I set it up, this is really easy. So yeah, just down up bar, down up bar, down up bar, down up bar, down up bar. Okay. So, there's one room left. This is definitely going to be the hardest. Uh, hopefully it doesn't keep people from beating this level. Uh, this room is about air stalling, so... Basically, you may have seen me or somebody do something that looks like this. And that's what... I don't know, some people call it ground pound cancelling, I call it air stalling. But basically, the inputs here are very simple. It's what we did in the wall jump room just now. It's just down, up, R. Now, it's not that simple because there you could do it kind of like, you know, at your own pace here if you want to keep stalling. The faster you do it, the better you stall, so like, that's okay. That's pretty good, and that's really good. Um, okay, so let me explain ground pound canceling. So what you want to do, you ground pound and press up, but what a lot of people don't understand is that the up can be buffered. So a lot of people think you have to press down and then time the up press. You don't have to. You can press down, and then instantly press up, so... If I could show you... Yeah. So if I press down, and then up, he cancels, but if I do it instantly, like this... Like, I'm pressing up too soon, but it's buffered, so as long as you're holding up, he'll cancel it. Um, so really the only input you have to time is the, are the twirl and the actual ground pound. The up press is just whenever. Just press it instantly after ground pounding. So what it looks like is like I press down then I instantly am holding up. But if you press twirl too soon, um, let me see if I can show this. Like my finger on twirl here. If I press twirl too soon, well, yeah. So there is a delay to do the twirl. There's also, um, actually now that I think of it, I think the ground pound can be buffered as well. Yeah, so, really I guess the twirl is the only thing you have to time. Because if I twirl and then just start holding down, he just, uh, Luigi just waits until the twirl is done before he does the ground pound. So, actually the only thing you have to time is the twirl. But it's a rhythm, 
Um, a lot of people, you can be very comfortable doing it at a speed like this, and if you can do it like this fast, you should be able to beat this room. So, what I do with the twirl, you remember I said like, oh, you press, if you press it too soon, he doesn't do it. Uh, so what I like to do, you can press any four of the shoulder buttons. Um, and if you press it too soon, it's not like it messes it up. It just doesn't do anything. So what I do, uh, the optimal way to do it would be press all four of them at separate times. Kind of roll your fingers like. And so if you pressed it too soon, those presses wouldn't do anything. But what you want is the one that pressed it on time. And you want to press it as early as you can. So essentially there's a window. And if you press it before, like, so picture there's a bar going and then at some point the twirl, you're able to do it from that point onwards. So let's say like right here is where the, uh, where it will actually register. So you're going, you press it, nothing happens, you press it, nothing happens. And then like you're past the point, you press it and it twirls. What you wanna do, if you were like perfect, you'd press it on the first frame to where it actually registers. So what I do is I press multiple buttons to try to, um, to try to ensure that I get as close to the first frame as possible. And the best way to do that is using multiple twirl buttons. Like, some of them may be early, some of them may be late, but hopefully one of them is as close to the first frame as possible. Anyway, I hope this makes sense. Um, the actual way I do it kind of looks like this. Uh, let me see. I only... So when I'm doing uh, air stalling, I only use... R and ZR. I don't use L or ZL. You could, it would give you uh, more accuracy if you wanted, but it just feels awkward because you're also using the joystick or D-pad, so it, it kind of feels weird to use your uh, the L buttons. Yeah, let me see if I can show this. This is what it looks like. So, and that's with me going pretty fast, me holding the controller like that, it's hard to go at like the best speed, but if you want to do a passing speed for this room, it would look something like this. Also, I know a lot of you use the D-pad. Um, a lot of people say these are harder with the D-pad, and I'm not sure if they are, because I never use it. It feels harder to me, but I think that's just because I'm uncomfortable with it. Uh, another player on Twitch, Shun, uh, he uses the D-pad, and he can do them very fast, so... But, even the D-pad, the same rules all apply that I said before, uh, but it would look like this. Anyway, hopefully that makes sense. Um, it's hard to do. It's definitely not easy. A lot of really good players struggle with it. And I hope the reason they struggle is they just don't understand it fully. But anyway, after all that, here's this room. Uh, you go in here, there's a Goomba, some spikes. Oh, you can die in this room. So you notice... Um, there was an on-off switch, and the red coin's there, so we have to go in here instead. And that's why this is here, because I want that to be reset, otherwise you would just go back in and it would be very easy. So what you want to do is stall, and long enough to get that switch to trigger, so you could try twirling. Not gonna work. Uh, you could try just ground pound. You actually may be able to do this. It's pretty close, 
but without you'd have to be very 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 rapid with it um, but adding in twirls and ground pounds it's pretty easy like if you can go at that speed you can beat this room trust me i'm confident anybody can do it as long as you're physically able to do the button presses um it's not too hard but there's also a hard mode if you really want to test your skill. I've only gotten this once. I'll try to get it again. Uh, right when you come out of the door, twirl. That way you don't hit the Goomba. And then try to do it without using the Goomba. Here we go. Let me see if I can get this again. <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's extremely tight. But if you're really good at air stalls, and you can do this, then you've mastered it. <laughs> that was really close. I don't know. I'm not confident I can get this again. If I were to raise this door up by one, I definitely can. But, yeah. Anyway, if you think you can do that, I'd love to know. <laughs> I've gotten it once, I swear. It just wasn't on uh, camera. There's also a couple things in uh, Mario Maker 1 that no longer work in this game. Um, so you may have seen somebody do something like this where... You may have seen somebody do something like this where they jump and ground pound and it, you know, it gives them height to get up. It doesn't do that anymore. Ground pounding does not gain height and I believe that's... I don't know, they changed the animation or something? Um, but you could use that to do that or enter a pipe that looked like this. Uh, this is no longer a thing either, which is really unfortunate, because I like doing this. This is how I entered, like, every pipe in Mario Maker 1, but it doesn't work anymore. Uh, and it's just because ground pounds don't give you any height. Um, which, that also makes air stalling less effective. So in Mario Maker 1, since every ground pound you gain a bit of height, uh, you could stall for longer, but... Not so much in this game. Also, there was a trick where you could ground pound a block like this. Um, the way you did it was jump, twirl, and then ground pound. But that just doesn't... It's not a thing. It only applied... So if there was another block here on the ground, it wouldn't work. It had to be on the edge, like no block next to it. Um, it was really tight, actually, but... It just, it's not a thing in this game. Uh, and one more thing that I didn't include a room for, but is a thing in this game, is you can drift while you're ground pounding. So, if I'm like here and I do a ground pound, I don't hit the block. But, if I do a ground pound from here and hold left, it'll hit the block. I don't know if you can see it. Let me, uh... Let me make it a little more noticeable. If we do it from way up here... here we go. See? Uh, you can drift. And you could like drift to the right as well, you could drift multiple directions. It's rarely useful, but you may find a way to use it. I mean... It can be done. Uh, if you know the hardest level... Well, the second hardest level I beat in Mario Maker 1, A3, the last battle, actually forced you to do that at one point. Um, but yeah, that's mostly everything on ground pounding. Uh, hopefully you learned something from this. Uh, if you are confused or whatever, maybe you're like, hey, you didn't explain this or blah blah blah. Leave a comment and I'll try to figure it out, uh, help you out. Main thing I want people to learn from this and be interested, like, oh, NSMU actually can be fun. Um, something else that's not shown in this video. Uh, so you may see something like this. 
And a lot of people don't understand this, like... A surprising amount. Um, you can't... So if you're... Remember how I said if you're too close to the ground, you can't ground pound? Like... Yeah. So a level may build a spike wall that you can just barely jump over. Like, obviously you can get very high over this one, but I could have done this, I guess. Can you even get over this? Yeah. So you can barely get over this. Uh, look how close he is to that spike. He's so close he died. No. Look how close he is when you clear it. Um, that's definitely too close to the ground to ground pound. Now the level may want you to like jump over and then ground pound. You have to wait until you are completely past the spike. Because if you're not, the spike, is, even though it doesn't look like it, it is below you as far as the game's coordinates or whatever consider you. And it's like he's too close to the ground, can't ground pound. Uh, so if you press down, like, there, that was, that was too soon. Um, a lot of people are like, why doesn't it let me ground pound? That's why. You're not allowed if you're too close to the ground. And if you haven't completely moved to the right of it, um, it will not ground pound. They think it's like a bug, but no, it's just, uh, it's just, I don't know, that's how it is. Also, one more thing, a common thing is, let's say, you're falling off a ledge. And there's a tight timer, and you keep timing out. People may be like, you should ground pound, it'll be faster. And sometimes it is, but most of the time it is not. And the reason you're faster going down with the ground pound, the problem is this, how... See how he just stops? There's like the ground pound animation. And that adds on a lot of time, so... Yes, you're falling faster, but that stall, um, it makes it take longer, and it usually ends up being slower. Yeah, 14, I think, is actually right. But if it doesn't look something like this... Um, like, see how high up this is? This is when it would be faster. <laughs> if it's a big, big, big fall. Any other time, it's just not. Um, so yeah, it can be faster, it's usually not, but if it's a really, really big fall, it definitely is faster. There's also one thing I included at the very end that is actually slightly useful. I mean, you see this sometimes. Uh, so if you ground pound and land on a conveyor, you don't need this to beat this part. This is just for fun, but... If you ground pound on a conveyor, you know how I mentioned, uh... Well... How if you ground pound, you get stuck like this. Um, the same thing applies to a conveyor, except... The conveyor is there, pulling you to the right or left, whichever way it's going. So doing that keeps you in the ground pound state. So in this case, you could just hold the down button. And it's pretty cool. Also, there's that thing with <laughs> coin blocks that I think looks really funny. This is kind of rare, but it just looks cool. Some people do put this in speedrun levels, though. Alright. Now, all we have left to do is upload it. Oh, <laughs> 
Oh. <laughs> well, good enough. If you can beat it faster than that, then you're pretty good. Even though I messed up at the end. Alright, there we go. That is the final clear check. And comes that level code. Well, almost. Description, uh... There. <laughs> I don't really know what else to put. Uh... Themed. There you go, V8C, C1D, XDG. Uh, if you want to play it, there's the code. I'll also have it in the description. Uh, but hopefully you guys can beat it. And if you beat my time, well, then this tutorial is probably worthless to you because you're probably very good. Anyway, uh, I guess that concludes this video. Hopefully you learned something, things... They don't make sense or you're just confused i don't know uh, leave a comment i'll try to help out um but yeah the indicators are not as good in this level i don't really know <laughs> i don't know how better to indicate it so i have a feeling people who don't know about this video are going to really really struggle and that's i don't know that's something i don't know how to avoid but yeah Thank you guys so much for watching, I appreciate it. Um, I'll make more of these. I'm planning to make one on twirling and wall jumping. Uh, there'll be one on shells, springs, p-switches, pals, repeller hat, fire flower, uh, maybe star power, and then like some advanced stuff. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching guys, and I will see you next time.